only got 10 minutes. Don't worry, we'll get there in time. Oh, but look at all this traffic. Just read the directions and I'll keep my eyes on the road. Now, what's the next street I turn on? Turn left here, Mom. Left here. This doesn't look familiar for some reason. Uh, don't worry, Mom. This is it. Then I spotted the street. The directions said to turn on Fairview and go three blocks west. Are you sure this is where we're supposed to be? I'm just following the signs. Wait a minute, we're on Fairway. Oh, we are? Well, yeah, just look at the sign. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Sorry? Are we anywhere near where we're supposed to be? Fairway. So that's when Mom came to the brilliant conclusion that I needed. Glasses. Oh, they're lovely, dear. Very smart looking. They, um, they compliment your face very nicely. You guys don't have to pretend. Good. Then I think... You think what, Tim? I think they look okay, Trish. It's still you, honey. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's not as embarrassing as getting lost all the time. Yeah, but you guys are my family. I don't even want to imagine what my friends are going to say. Oh, who cares? You're unique. Right, Grandpa. But why me? <laughs> So complicated. Just imagine building the real thing. Honey, I'm proud of you. Things look clearer these days? Yeah, I can tell the difference. No more missed street signs for me. <laughs> we always assumed that at least one of you would need glasses someday. It runs in the family, I'm afraid. I just can't wait to get contacts like you have, Dad. Well, I went through the same thing you did, and I was even younger. My teacher noticed that I kept getting up to get a drink of water from the sink in the front of the classroom. She figured out that I couldn't see the board from my seat in the back of the room. So she caught you looking at the board, huh? I didn't even know I had a problem. I just assumed everybody saw things like I did. He was so cute back then. Oh. Little horn-rimmed glasses, big front teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've improved with age. <laughs> So, great-grandpa Thomas had glasses, too. Mm -hmm. He had those cool ones that just sit on your nose. So he's responsible for my eyes. Well, not just him. Take your pick. <laughs> oh, thanks, uh -huh. Megan. That's perfect. I think you really did pick nice frames, Tricia. Don't you think so, Megan? Yeah, they're great. Everyone thinks so. Enough with the compliments already. I've accepted them. I'm just a victim of my relatives. Victim of your relatives? Yeah, because I have a bunch of ancestors with bad eyes. I'm stuck. <laughs> I think I got my dad's big feet. Well, what about all the good things that you inherited? You're both smart, you're good at sports, and you sing, Tricia. Those things you inherited from those relatives as well. And best of all, you're you. No one else is just like you, and you're not just like any of your relatives. That could be great news. Um, Mr. Newton, are you practicing for cheerleading tryouts? Or... He's sending coded messages to the bookshelves. Coded messages? In my day, codes were very important. Ah, the wireless. This doesn't look like a cell phone to me, Grandpa. Hmm? 
Oh, well, it's not that kind of wireless, but uh, never mind that for now. Now, you remember that when God created every living thing, he created them by kinds. Hmm? Dog kind, cat kind, chimp kind, lizard kind. And don't forget mankind. <sighs> there. Now, God created kinds by a code. Code? Like a secret code? Well, yes. See if you can guess what this is. <clears throat> My dad taught me how to do this. Uh, he was a telegraph operator. Uh, I'm a little rusty. And I think I just said, Hello, Megan. Hello, Trisha. Hi, Grandpa. Why are you telling us this? It's a secret code. Well, uh, it's supposed to be Morse code. Um, here. Take a look at this. Now, it's really very simple. Each letter of the alphabet has a pattern of dots and dashes. A dot is a short sound, and a dash is a long sound. Here. H, E, L, L, O. I still can't understand it. Well, it's a pattern, uh, like on the page here. And it's not a secret if you know the code. So, what does this have to do with Trisha's eyes being bad? Well, the secret of that is in the code, too. It's all about heredity and genetics. Heredity is what we inherit from our parents and grandparents? Well, things you inherit are called traits. Now, a trait is something like um, the color of your hair, your eyes, uh, whether you're tall or short, or uh, your skin tone, or whether you can roll your tongue. That trait doesn't seem too important. Well, it might if you had a good reason to roll your tongue. Yeah, but you're right. Uh, some traits are very valuable. Others um, don't seem to be uh, good or bad, and um, others are not obvious at all. Mm. But everything like that is inherited? Well, some traits are kind of hard to pin down uh, because they uh, are influenced by other things. Uh, for example, uh, how smart you are. Now, a lot of people who are very smart don't seem to be very smart uh, because they maybe uh, never learned how to read. Yeah. Heredity explains a lot, but uh, not everything. <clears throat> well, what about genetics? Is that different from heredity? Well, genetics is kind of like studying the way that heredity works. Uh, genetics tells us um, how uh, the things that we inherited uh, get passed down. Hmm. Ah. <clears throat> God created kinds by a code. <laughs> now that I can understand. Ah, you're right. Yeah, you could read what I typed. Mm -hmm. And because you could read what I typed, you could understand what I said. Well, that's obvious. That's genetics. <sighs> it's all about communicating information. <clears throat> now, these Morse code letters uh, just seemed like a lot of uh, dots and dashes strung together. But once they were in the right sequence, and you could read the code... You could understand them, just like letters on a page. Ha-ha! <laughs> now we come to one of the most fascinating discoveries science has ever made. DNA. DNA. I've heard of it. It's the spiral thing, right? Right. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribo... what? Deoxyribonucleic acid. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Now, uh, the shape of DNA was discovered in 1953. Uh, once scientists determined the uh, shape, uh, they could begin to look at the actual code of life that God placed there. These colors are like the dots and dashes in the Morse code. Exactly. The DNA molecule is made up of just a few chemicals, uh, like the dots and dashes. But it's one of the most complex information storage systems that we know of. So, if I could read this pattern, I'd be able to tell why I have bad eyesight. If you could read all of the DNA in your body, 
you would know most everything about how our bodies are built and function. But heredity means that we have to pass the information around, right? Yeah. Someone or something has to be able to read the code. Ah. Yeah. This is a sort of code transport system, the chromosome. God created the chromosome to uh, carry the messages of his design. Like a piece of paper. You can show it to someone else to read. The chromosomes contain the genes, these smaller pieces here. They're made of DNA. And the genes determine heredity. So it's called genetics because we're studying genes. Good thinking, Megan. So I have genes that give me bad eyesight? Your eyesight is something that's determined a lot by your genes. You know that the nucleus of every cell contains the plans for telling the cell what to do. Now, in every cell of your body, uh, there are complete plans for your whole body inside the nucleus, hidden as a code in the chromosomes. Those are pretty complicated plans. All in a tiny cell? Yeah, I'll say. Now, in the nucleus of your cell, there are 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. And each chromosome may have thousands of genes strung along it like beads. Hmm. Now, here's an example. Uh, each gene uh, controls something. Uh, it tells a cell what it's going to make or what its shape will be. Electrician. So this gene would control what? Your nervous system is electrical. Maybe that gene helps build your nerve cells. Yeah. Yeah. Construction genes build uh, muscle and, uh, and, and bone. Yeah. Here's one marked decorator. I guess this one tells your hair cells what color they are. <laughs> <laughs> and the genes tell the cells what to do by a DNA code, like words on a page. Mm -hmm. Now, the sequence of chemicals within a gene uh, is like the ink on a piece of paper. Uh, it's a sentence or a huge set of instructions uh, that will tell the cell what to do. It's information. Uh, and so far, it's too complicated for even the best computers to read. My brain hurts already. Oh, I understand completely, Tricia. Uh, all this talk of code and information uh, will be easier to understand if we look at some real examples. I think it's time for a visit to my wallabugs. Uh. Ah. There we are. Biston betularia. Ah, some very famous moths. Uh, they're called peppered moths. Oh, I bet they get the peppered name from their coloring, right? And I bet it's camouflage from the predators. Right. Now, lots of animals use similar defensive techniques. Uh, they just blend into the natural surroundings. I can just barely see this light-colored moth. But the dark one is really obvious. To us and to a predator. Right? Right. Now, these kinds of moths were very common in the United States in the 1850s. Uh, both light and dark ones existed. But 98% of the moths were light-colored. It seems that the survival rate of the dark moths was less, uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> now, look what happened over the next hundred years. Uh, the area that the moths lived in uh, was polluted by smoke from industry, and the bark turned darker. Now, the dark ones were hidden, but the light ones were exposed to predators. And what do you think happened? <laughs> I bet the dark ones took over, since they weren't getting eaten as much. <laughs> by 1950, the dark-colored moths were 98% of the population, a total reversal. So what does this tell us about genetics, Grandpa? Well, it's called natural selection. Now, natural selection tells us that traits uh, like color will either help or hinder a moth's survival. Now, if the moth's color helps it to survive, then it has a better chance to uh, produce offspring uh, who will carry on the trait. And the ones that don't have the trait are lunch. <laughs> right. Now, evolutionists uh, try to use this example as proof uh, that natural selection can change one species into another. 
Uh, actually, this is an example of variation within a kind. Now, God created peppered moths as a kind, and he allowed for both uh, light and dark varieties. So, natural selection may help decide which one is more common? But you still have just light and dark peppered moths, not new kinds of moths. Mm -hmm. No one has ever found any evidence that one kind of creature can turn into a totally different kind of creature, even over long periods of time. Natural selection works to give us variation within a species, not new forms of life. Grandpa loves his moths. <laughs> I use genetics all the time in my garden. We can use what we know about genetics to uh, create bigger fruit and... Uh, different colored flowers. Hmm. My grandfather used to breed dogs for shows. I remember him telling me how he picked the dogs for the traits that he wanted. Well, he could breed them carefully so that the genes for a nice shiny coat would be passed down to the next generation, like size or ability to jump, lots of things. We call that artificial selection. Man is choosing the traits. So we can control some things about how we look and stuff? Now, in people, we leave the control up to God. However, we can predict some traits, if we know enough history. Ah. Now, here are a few generations of your relatives. Now, let's uh, pick some traits and see where they go. Can we pick something besides bad eyesight? <laughs> <laughs> sure. In a family tree, you can see easily how the genes are passed on. You get half your genes from your mother and half from your father. It's, it's pretty simple. So, I have blue eyes and my mom's eyes are blue. Mm -hmm. You come from a long line of beautiful blue-eyed ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and strong, handsome men. Oh. <laughs> So, you know that the gene for blue eyes is being passed through all these generations. Mm -hmm. Well, I have brown eyes like both of my parents, but I have a friend whose parents have brown eyes, but she has blue eyes. How does that work? Remember, it's called variation. Now, sometimes a gene can remain hidden for one generation and then get passed down and uh, reappear in the next. It's because of what are called dominant and recessive genes. With eye color, it's easy. The brown genes are always dominant over the blue genes. Please. <laughs> no jokes, please. <laughs> now, if brown and blue genes are mixed from both parents, you always get brown eyes. Brown's dominant. Mm -hmm. Got it. But look. In your friend's case, there must be some blue genes hiding somewhere, still getting passed on. These two parents would both have brown eyes because the brown genes would dominate over the blue genes. Mm -hmm. It's just right here hiding. Mm -hmm. yeah. but look. Um, when the chromosomes duplicate themselves and then uh, join up with their match from the other parent, you'll get one child that has only blue genes. All the others uh, will have brown eyes. It's because the recessive genes were in hiding from a previous generation. Maybe the, the grandparents. And then in the grandchild, it was passed on and they appeared again. Mm -hmm. uh, most traits are controlled by lots of genes working together. So they're harder to predict. So, let me see. DNA is like a code, and genes are made up of DNA. Genes are strung along the chromosomes in the nucleus of every cell in our body. They tell the cells how to work and what to build. Mm -hmm. They build traits, like eye color and height and everything else about us. Natural selection helps create variety within kinds of creatures based on whether or not the trait helps the creature survive and have children. Yes. You've got it! <laughs> <laughs>
For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Ah, I got your message that you uh, had some more questions about variety in people today and genes. Yeah, and we were also wondering about Adam and Eve's genes. What kind of traits did they have? Well, now, that's a question. Uh, we don't know what um, eye color Adam and Eve had, nor their skin tone, nor their height. What the Bible tells us is that Adam and Eve were created in God's image, and that's what's important. Yeah. But, since you're wondering about genes, I've got something to show you. We knew you'd be ready with something, Grandpa. Now, do you two remember what this is? Yeah, it's a chromosome. It carries the code for everything in life. And these smaller parts are genes. They're made of DNA. And, uh, you remember how many chromosomes we have in our cells? Human beings have... Uh, 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. We get half from our mother and half from our father. Well, you two really were paying attention. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Now, Let's uh, take skin tone, for instance, which is controlled mainly by four genes. Huh? Now, let's uh, call these genes capital A, small a, capital B, small b. Hmm? Everyone has the same chemical in their bodies that colors our skin. It's called melanin. Now, melanin turns your skin dark. How dark your skin is uh, depends mostly on how much melanin is in it. So we all have melanin in our skin, just in different amounts. Exactly. And these four genes control the amount we have? Just like these four spigots. Exactly right, Megan. Now, remember I said that it was two pairs of genes mm -hmm. that control our skin tone. Mm -hmm. um, let's say that the lightest color would be represented by small a, small b's. Hmm? Mm -hmm. The small letters stand for the lighter genes. So if the capital letters stand for darker genes, then people with darker skin color would have capital A, A, B, B? Exactly right. <laughs> That's the idea, Megan. Yeah. The lightest skin would have only light color genes, and the darker skin would have only dark color genes with no others mixed in. Now, this is called a genetic square. Now, you can make every possible combination of two pairs of genes from a father and mother using this box. Hmm? You remember, like with our eye color, each parent gives you half of your genes. Huh? I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, by using just capital and small A's and B's, we can figure out every combination of skin color that's possible. By changing just one pair of jeans... You can make the color a little darker or a little lighter. <laughs> Here in the middle is sort of medium skin. They have two of each kind of jeans. Dark and light. Here they're a little darker, but here they're a little lighter. From these four genes, there are five possible shades of skin color. And 
when you look at people all over the earth today, you'll see those shades, some with variation for other reasons. Look, less than half of the children of these parents have medium skin. Four will have a shade darker, and four will have a shade lighter. Only one in 16 will have the lightest or the darkest shade. So God made all of this variety, and yet somehow we all bear his image. That's right, Tricia. We all do, for his glory. Now. Evolutionary theory assumes that the amount of genetic information at the beginning was very small. Uh, it was uh, like a short sentence on the paper, not much variety possible. Uh, it expanded randomly and by natural selection, like the peppered moths, until we got the incredible variety that we see today. Now, creation, on the other hand, says that God built in a lot of information into different kinds when he created them. Uh, like a huge encyclopedia of words. Uh, it was a large gene pool from the beginning that explains the amazing variety that we see today. But there's only variety within kinds, not between kinds. So one kind of animal doesn't ever change into another kind of animal, <laughs> like a mouse into a whale. <laughs> We've never seen it in any fossil record, no matter how much time we give it to happen by chance. The genes for one kind of animal or plant stay basically the same for every variation, just in different percentages. So, there's a lot of variety because of natural selection, but not really a new kind of animal created from another one. Ah. There. It's finally finished. Nice job. We're an excellent team. Puzzles have become my specialty. I like to see what all the little pieces turn into when it's done. It's kind of like what you're learning about heredity. There are a lot of little pieces. Our DNA. But it's only when they're put together properly that they become something. Like words on a page that tell us something. Or an Eiffel Tower. <laughs> like pictures in a book? Well, what kind of information are you finding in there, Tim? Any hidden codes? Well, Trisha's eyesight problems definitely come from your side of the family, Dad. That's obvious. What else do we have to worry about? Hey, remember, heredity gives us good traits, too. Oh, I see something in your future, Tim. Look at Mom's side. Yeah, just a bunch of normal-looking people. No glasses there. No, just a bunch of shiny heads. <laughs> You mean... Not to worry. It's just another example of the variety God created. <laughs> <laughs>